Uh, without objection, the chair is authorized to, to declare recess of the subcommittee at any time. And welcome to today's hearing entitled Bridging the Valley of Death. Great title. Uh, RPE's role in developing breakthrough technologies. I recognize myself for five minutes for an opening statement. Well, good morning. Uh, today we're going to tackle, as I said, uh, the Department of Energy's Advanced Research Project Agency uh, for Energy, and it's known as ARPA-E. This year marks the 15th anniversary of funding its very first project, and a lot has changed since then. Uh, but one thing hasn't, and that's that RPE's successful approach to America's energy innovation and its ability to bridge the well-documented valley of death uh, for disruptive innovations. Created in 2007 by the American Competes Act and reauthorized in the Energy Act of 2020, RPE was developed to advance U.S. leadership in science and technology. You know, despite the growth of the venture investing and technology startups in the United States, private investors have largely passed on innovative energy technologies that require larger amounts of capital, uh, particularly expensive early stage capital and longer investment horizons uh, in order to realize a return on that investment. And quite frankly, this is where RPE feel, fills the gap, funding high risk, high reward technologies which may transform our nation's energy future. I would like to think of them as moonshots uh, in many cases. I think it is a good model. Since its conception, RPE has taken a Silicon Valley approach to staffing. Instead of creating an entrenched bureaucracy, the Department of Energy recruits individuals from academia, academia, industry, and the national laboratories to serve three to five year stints as program directors. This limited time frame fosters an environment of move fast and break things, which is highly conductive to risk taking, innovation, and economic results. RPE both contrasts and complements the Department of Energy's programmatic approach to innovation. These are the big projects that we're all familiar with. Compared to traditional DOE R&D programs, which last decades, RPE consistently develops new short-term moonshot programs which terminate after just a few years. The cyclical feature encourages its program managers to be strategic, to be nimble, and to demonstrate value and reduce risk. Now, where else are you going to hear that about the United States government? By uh, constantly evaluating potential te uh, technological gaps, RPE is efficient in allocating taxpayer dollars to discover and develop transformative technologies. Over the last 15 years, RPE has been instrumental in the development of a wide variety of revolutionary technologies related to fusion energy, advanced nuclear, and energy storage. Starting with the Alpha program in 2015 and progressing to the Chadwick program in 2024, RPE has accelerated efforts to deploy the very first fusion power plant. Early investments in novel fusion reactor designs and material sciences have been vital to decreasing institutional risk across the industry. And they've helped with the maturation of leading players such as Helion and Commonwealth Fusion Systems who benefited from these early programs. In the nuclear fission space, RPE has prioritized reducing operation and maintenance costs for advanced reactors through uh, Jemina yeah. and closing the nuclear fuel cycle with Curie and onwards. Reducing capital costs across the whole value chain is vital to widespread deployment of next generation nuclear reactors and a reliable supply of nuclear fuels. RPE has played a unique role in making advanced nuclear a reality. With our nation's energy needs continuing to grow in tight correlation with the prosperity of our citizens, RPE has concentrated its efforts on energy storage. The duration addition to electricity storage, known as the DAYS program, seeks to extend the duration of stored energy to approximately 100 hours. These efforts are important to my constituents in Syracuse, uh, who depend on resilient and reliable energy during the winter. RPE's success in these technological areas, are among others and among others, uh, has benefited the taxpayer greatly. Since 2009, the program has funded over 1,560 projects with over $3.76 billion. This work has led to over 1,120 patents issued by the USPTO and formation of 154 new companies, fostered an additional 
$12.1 billion in private sector funding that has led to 29 investment exits with market valuations worth more than $21.9 billion from mergers, acquisitions, acquisitions, and IPOs. Just the capital gains taxes paid to the United States Treasury from these successful investments is alone to enough to pay for the entire $3.76 billion investments from the Department of Energy. With this success, RPE has established a new technological pipeline which previously did not exist. This pipeline of new technology comes with new jobs for workers, new opportunities for investors, and new drivers of energy security and energy abundance for Americans. ARPA-E provides critical early stage funding and creates a pathway to future partnerships with the Department of Energy. One example, Zap Energy, who is one of our witnesses today, received funding from the beta program and now is a participant in the Office of Science new milestone-based fusion development program. RPE has been highly successful since its inception, and I look forward to seeing the progress over the next 15 years. I want to thank our witnesses for the testimony, and I look forward to our conversation. Forgive me for going.